The beauty of a micro model is that it allows us to do experiments on something that resembles a porous media and visualize what's happening at the pore scale. When we do a simulation, we model the actual fluid flow using the Navier-Stokes equations. And we are able to look at the intricacies of the flow around the grains and through the pores. So we have a model that looks something like this uh, with some grains in it. And uh, we put flow through the pores and we get some kind of a circuitous flow like so. So that's one way to represent flow and, and ultimately we'll look at transport uh, through porous material. But in many cases you don't do that. It, you would, it, it's too um, complicated and too numerically intensive to represent porous media that way. And instead you average out all of the head loss in pores and essentially assign it to an effective media. So you say that this complicated pore structure is just represented by a uniform material that has a, a property that represents uh, the pore structure. And what we do is say that the, um, the, the, if we impose a head gradient across this block, this micro model, uh, and then measure what the flow is, that we have a, uh, an effective material here that has the same flow uh, when we apply the same uh, gradient. And uh, we do that by assuming that this effective material is governed by Darcy's law. And so that says that the flux is equal to the permeability divided by the um, dynamic viscosity times the, the pressure gradient. So what we want to do is find a permeability for this material that allows us to create the same flux through the effective material as we did with the micro model. Okay, so that's how we upscale the, the flow through the, this pore structure and come up with an effective media. That's really what permeability means. And so we can test this out by determining an effective permeability for the uh, micro model um, just simply by rearranging Darcy's law. And that gives us this. And if we substitute in the results from our analysis, actually, let me just do it down here where I'll have a little bit more room. The flux that we calculated from Comsol was uh, 10, uh, 6.7 times 10 to the minus 5 meters per second. The dynamic viscosity uh, that we used was 0 0.001 Pascal seconds. And the pressure gradient was 1 Pascal per 0 0.0222 meters. And so this is going to give us the pascals cancel, the seconds cancel. We have units of meters squared. And if we go and, and put this into our calculator, we get uh, this number for the permeability. 1.5 times 10 to the minus 9 meters squared. OK, so that's what we get for uh, basically an effective porous media that would represent this micro model. So what I want to do is to test this concept by creating another model that uses this rectangular region the same size as the micro model but we'll just treat it as a uniform material with this permeability and we'll apply the same head gradient and we'll calculate uh, the flux. Actually I think what I'll do is I'll do a little bit differently. Instead of using the, the, head, the pressure boundary conditions like we did previously, I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to have this be uh, a pressure equals zero, and I'm going to specify the flux coming in uh, at this boundary to be equal to that value. And then I'm going to calculate what the pressure is and see if I get the same pressure as I did in the micro. 
So this is the model that I created to verify the permeability that we calculated in the previous video. This started out as the simulation of the micromodel and I added to it this additional component here and I did that by just going up here to the top and hitting right click and adding a 2D component and if we expand this out we see that a component is really just another model. Um, we have a geometry that is this rectangular feature here and uh, it has the same dimensions as the rectangular micro model and what I did this is just a, a quick tip here I went here to the, uh, the, the micro model and there's the rectangle um, in the micro model geometry and I just copied this uh, I duplicated it and then I dragged the, that duplicated uh, node right down there and we have it as a geometry in the second model and then I put in Darcy's Law of Physics and this is set up in a pretty straightforward way. The fluid is water with the density and viscosity properties of water. The porosity is that value which is really just a nominal value at this point. Uh, it doesn't really matter what porosity you use. Uh, but the permeability here, this does matter and this is the value that we calculated in the previous slide. This was calculated from the data that we got from the micromodel. So then we go and use default values here. The, the boundary condition on the upstream side, the inlet boundary, is a inflow velocity and I used here the inflow velocity that we calculated from the micromodel. And the downstream uh, boundary condition is just pressure that we set equal to zero. Okay, so now we've got a problem where we're fixing the inlet velocity and we're going to calculate the pressure that results. So we do that and let's just go take a look at the rest of this. The, the mesh here, this is the default mesh. Uh, in the micro model, the default mesh didn't work too well, but here the default mesh will work just fine. And we put in another study. The study here has to be put in by going up there and right clicking and adding the study. It's another stationary study. And you, th this will work best if you go and disable the laminar flow and just have the check Darcy's Law. So you're really only solving for the Darcy's Law physics with this study. And then I ran it and well we go ahead and run it again it's a very fast model and so let's see um, this will generate a new data set and there's the, the result so let's see we have pressure here that's being displayed with this color flood and here's zero pressure uh, the boundary condition and then up here on the upstream side the maximum pressure is 0.99 so that essentially is confirming that we're using an effective permeability that gives us the same flow for uh, when we have the same head drop as the micro model so that's essentially what permeability is used for it's used as it's used to average out the effects of the, this intricate pore structure so that we have the same flow over a representative region. This would be our representative volume right here.